Hello, fellow ham radio operators. This is Sean, WB6JWB, with my story about rebuilding a 220 repeater and remote base. The original repeater was built and installed in May of 1994. It has consisted largely of the same equipment since that time to include the solar panels and charge controller. Everything had run relatively smoothly for the past 21 years until one day in July... The original controller was a Lincom RLC-1, a fine controller by any measure. However, with today's technology, it's time to change it out. I found a current version of an RCOM controller that someone else had uh, burned up, so it came really cheap. Thankfully, I was able to repair the controller for use. I had some ideas about changing the radio configuration and operation to employ some of the features of the new RCOM controller. Most of these would be implemented by way of a breakout box. While my old system had a breakout box, it did not meet any of my needs for measuring battery voltage, temperature, and remote control of auxiliary radios. After punching a bunch of holes in the box for connectors, I installed a relay board which adapts nicely to the RCOM open collector outputs with ease. These relays serve to switch on and off a 2 meter Radio, a 440 half duplex radio, along with a couple of spare 12 volt Jones sockets for future use. The box also includes four constant on Jones sockets for the primary transmitter, receiver, controller, and amplifier. Additionally, phono plugs are used for analog inputs to the controller. One is used to measure battery voltage, and two others are used to measure indoor and outdoor temperature. The outdoor temperature probe is on the end of a cable which has since been weather sealed. The box also contains wiring from the controller to provide data for the 2 meter radio which enables it to be frequency agile. It serves as a main power source for the entire radio system with a main input from the battery supply for distribution to the equipment as needed. The 2 meter radio is a Kenwood TM271A. Solder pads on the inside of the radio, intended for packet use, are used for transmit and receive audio, along with a COS signal. Data for frequency is supplied via a CAT5 cable to the mic connector. The radio after modification plugs into the controller via DB9 connector. I also made a couple of modifications to the ORCOM controller, which are commonly done to mix various audio levels and to allow for the external temperature probes to be installed easier. With as much pre-work done as possible, it's time to haul the old repeater off the hilltop. The old configuration worked well for many years, but now it's time for a change. I gutted the old homebrew rack and took everything down to the most fundamental parts. Opening up the old breakout box was like looking into a time capsule. Those relays must have been through thousands of actuations over the years and they still work like new. Sorry to see the old thing go. While I saved the old chassis for the 220 transmitter and receiver, they were both completely cleaned up and rewired. I also installed a PL decoder directly into the receiver chassis. One of the issues in the past had to do with poor connections to the RF chassis, causing various gremlins to manifest. This time, I hardwired everything coming and going to the receiver and transmitter. It may not look pretty, but it's solid. The 440 half duplex radio serves as a link to another remote base. This was to be a plug and play move of this radio into the new configuration, but Mr. Murphy had other ideas. Seems the RCOM controller wanted nothing to do with the existing COS signal, which would cause the radio's automatic shutdown circuitry to keep the squelch closed. About two days of troubleshooting were consumed to overcome this issue. Now with the hardware built, it's time to plug it all together, take some measurements, make adjustments, and fix what doesn't work. With all of the hidden complexities of the breakout box, it surprisingly worked like a charm. After the hardware was complete and tested, it was time to change some of the RCOM controller functions via software. This is much easier to do in software as compared to over the air using DTMF. Functions such as automatic identification, macros, accuracy, the temperature and battery measurements, and so forth were made. I probably should have bench tested longer, but I want to get the thing back on the hill. 
so we took a ride in the Jeep and prepared for the installation. First, there was a matter of assembly and installation of the dual band antenna for the 2 meter and 440 radios. Then it was time to clean up the battery wire inside the vault. That was followed by installation of a new solar charge controller. The old one continued to work, but the newer algorithms will provide more power to the batteries from the old solar panels. And almost last was a business of cleaning up the wiring inside the little rack. And of course, we can't forget the external temperature probe. And finally, it's time to move the rack into the vault, plug in the power, and do the final smoke test. Well, here we are at Cypress Mountain on a Saturday a zillion flies and mosquitoes helping me make the installation of the rebuilt 220 repeater. We've installed the different antenna, dual band antenna, and we've swapped out the charge controller and uh, rewired the uh, connection to the batteries. And we just plugged it into the repeater and are now going to do the initial smoke test with my shaky camera. We'll hit the big on switch and we'll see what happens. The antennas are plugged in. So far, so good.